Welcome to the Ultimate Music Teacher's Productivity and Profitability Podcast. I'm your host, Glory St. Germain. Tune in to discover how you can unleash your teaching potential and turn your passion for music education into profit. Let's dive in. Welcome to the Ultimate Music Teacher's Productivity and Profitability Podcast, where we delve into the hearts and minds of those who have shaped the world of music education. I'm your host, Glory St. Germain, and today we are honored to have the Irish-born pianist Peter Mack, a distinguished figure known for his captivating performances and insightful teaching. Peter, who currently serves as the MTNA National President and resides in Seattle, has a wealth of experience that spans the globe. So let's dive into this world of music and discover the melody of his journey. Welcome, Peter. Thank you very much, Gloria. It's an honor to be here. Well, I am so excited. We have met before at a previous MTNA conference, and I was so delighted. And congratulations, as you are the president, the national president of MTNA, and truly an influential figure in music education. So (laughs) what exciting developments are you looking forward to sharing at the upcoming conference in Atlanta? So the MTNA conference happens every March and it moves around the country. So we try to cover all the different parts of the country so that no one is left out. This year, it's going in 2024 in March. It's going to be in Atlanta. And I think you put your finger on it. What's one of the most important things and most important reasons to go is just because it's so lovely to be with people who share what we do as a passion and who are interested in the same things. And it's really lovely to meet people. I would never have met you if I had not gone to that conference a few years ago. Of course, meeting people isn't the only thing. There are wonderful performances. There are big competitions. There's an exhibit hall. It's it's one thing to be on the internet and to look at pictures of things. But when you go to the exhibit hall, you can actually see the things and meet the people. And that's a wonderful thing. And then there are all these fabulous presentations. And I have, I could talk for hours about the presentations that are happening. But I did my favorite things. Now, I shouldn't say my favorite things because if people aren't on the list, then they will feel. (laughs) There are over a hundred different sessions being given, but I did notice some that I thought were interesting and, and were out of the ordinary. On Saturday, so it goes from Saturday to Wednesday, the conference does. And the opening session is on Saturday evening. But there's a specialized thing called Pedagogy Saturday that happens during the day on Saturday. And there are five different areas that are explored in depth. And those areas are artistry, diversity, equity, and inclusion, musician wellness, recreational music making, and young professionals. And when I looked at the, and when you register for Pedagogy Saturday, and it's a separate thing, you don't have to stay with one track. You can say, oh, I really like this one that's happening in the artistry track at 8 a.m. And then I really want to go to the DEI track at 9.15 and so on. But some of the things that I thought were fascinating were Roberto Poli wrote The Secret Life of Musical Notation. It's an incredibly lovely book. And it's about, I think it's published by Indiana. It's about how what we thought were the meanings of symbols in music actually have different meanings. For it. Like hairpins. I always thought that hairpins just meant you get louder and then you get softer. But they can also be rubato indications, as can Sforzando's, as can. And it's, it's a very esoteric or it's a very you know, nerdy thing, but it's a wonderful book. And he's going to be there. I've never met him. I've been so you can bet I'll be there. Leah Claiborne is doing in the DEI track. She's doing a piano music by black composers for beginning pianists. And that's one of the lovely things about the MTNA conference is that all levels from, from start to finish are covered. So that's a really good thing. In the wellness 
Antonel, he had an accident when he fractured one of his fingers, which was a really big and important thing. And he's talking about how that, and that can happen to any of us at any time. He's talking about turning a career-threatening injury into an educational experience. Fortunately, he's completely recovered and playing just as well as ever he did. But that's, I mean, that he's going to have a perspective that we can only we can only think about. I live in Seattle, and Katie Levine was the head of the Seattle Music Teachers at the age of 28. She's just a powerhouse, and she's doing, if I had a time machine working smarter, not harder. And of course, maximizing our time and getting the most efficiency is is a really important thing. We were chatting before we started this podcast about how something that we both do is when we use the microwave, if we want to put something on for one minute, instead of doing one zero zero, we do one 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 because it just shaves a few seconds off the time, and you think it's only a few seconds, but it just adds up. And so, when when you use your microwave from now on, if you're warming something up for three minutes, do three 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 instead of three zero zero, and think of us because yes. we. <laughs> saved you so much time. Then on Saturday evening, there will be the opening session and the opening recital. Sonia Hedlam and Martin Neron are going to do, and she's a, a soprano and he's a pianist. And they're going to do a lovely, lovely program of undiscovered or underrepresented composers, uh, many of them African-American. And, and that's just going to be it's going to open our ears in a way. She, and she's got the most gorgeous voice and he's a fabulous pianist. So she could sing the telephone book and we'd read <laughs> anyway. But it's just the most, it's it's a beautiful way to start the full conference. There'll also be a tribute to Gary Ingle at that opening session. Gary Ingle is the CEO of MTNA. He's been with MTNA gloriously for 28 years, but he's announced his retirement. So, although I had all these lovely plans when I was going to be president of MTNA, in fact, all I've been doing is working around finding, uh, interviewing his for his replacement applications. Actually, if you feel like being the new CEO of MTNA, we are looking for applications right now. So that's something that you can still do. So that's also going to be on the Saturday and then Sunday. Um, if you're a new member, we're very impressed and very much trying to attract new growth and new people. So there's a free breakfast that you can go, but it's at seven o'clock in the morning, God help us. And then <laughs> The keynote address will be given by Tim Topham, who's coming all the way from Australia just to talk to us. So that's a really, he's, he, some of you will know him. He's yeah. he is a powerhouse of education and he's so exciting and so innovative. And so he's, he's just great. For a, a higher level piano, there will be an intermediate piano masterclass given by Alex McDonald. Alex McDonald is a powerhouse teacher out of Texas who really has, who really knows what he's doing. He's He teaches in combination with his mother. And I really wanted to get him and his mother both giving the masterclass, but she has decided that she'd just rather if he was the one who did it. And so if I have my dream She'll be in the audience and he'll call her up, but, yes. but not making any promises. Then, but it's not just about high level piano instruction, creating music education content for YouTube. Ben Lardy, he's he's going to talk about that. Or Yelena Wells is going to talk about the top 10 digital marketing tools from survive to thrive on social media. Andrea Miller, she's going to do this. Is very sad, a crash course on self-employment taxes. <laughs> So right there, if you go to her talk, you'll be able to save the cost of the, of the registration and more because my self-employment taxes, I think I just, you know, pay the money and look the other way. But but yes. apparently there's a lot more that we can do. If you're interviewing, there's a panel with people like Alexander Cross at Michael Kirkhorny, Sana Pak, Joshua Tan. Oh, all these people who are who who have recently interviewed in colleges and who got jobs. And so they're going to say, how did they do it? It's called, whose interview is it anyway? <laughs> and 
on on Sunday evening, it's a it's a dinner time or it's a time to spend with the people who are from your region, and that's all set up. So if you come from Seattle, as I do, you'll be at the Northwest Division meeting and then the Northwest Division dinner, which your person who's in charge of the Northwest Division is organizing. So that's that's a lovely thing. And we've only gone two days, and there are three more to go. But shall oh my. I? <laughs> shall is it okay if I plow ahead? Is that Yes, and I just I just wanted to say, you know, Peter, I am so excited to not only be attending to learn from all of these experts, but also to be part of MTNA to be doing a showcase for Ultimate Music Theory and Tim Topham. You know, can't wait to meet him in person. Uh, Tim Topham has been a guest on my Ultimate Music Teachers podcast. He's a dear friend of mine. We've worked together for many, many years. So we're finally going to get to meet in person. And what you said earlier, Peter, it's so important to connect face to face with people because it's about developing relationships and Zoom is great. We can do a lot of things on Zoom, but it is still about attend live. So, you know, for those of you listeners that are considering coming to MTNA, you know, I highly recommend that you come live, like show up, be ready to learn. The speakers are phenomenal. This may be one of the only opportunities that you, you get to have this vast array of speakers and knowledge. And as educators, we never stop learning. And I think one of the most important things is showing up, being open to learning. And then my little two cents worth is make sure you implement Because one of the key factors as you expect your students to implement what you've taught in the lesson, it's just as important for you to write down your takeaway and then implement that knowledge. And it is a wealth of knowledge that you have put together, uh, Peter, for this event. It's going to be incredible. And speaking of 111, before we started recording the podcast, Peter and I were talking and I said, I love coffee and I drink it all day long. And when I microwave, I have to do it one, one, one. And in fact, that's our booth number is one, yes, one, one. So <laughs> make sure you come by booth number one, one, one to visit the Ultimate Music Theory team. We will be there. Can't wait to meet all of you. And also I'll be microwaving my coffee, one, one, one. <laughs> <laughs> one minute and 11 seconds. So we're, we've are we got two days of incredible uh, speakers and activities. What's coming up next? Okay, I mean, you you put your finger on it when you say that the the main reason to go is because you meet people like you, because yeah. you we all know your name and we all get all, all your stuff when we get know who you are. But we've never actually, I mean, I I have actually met you, but I met you yes. at a conference, yes. and yes. that's that you meet these famous people that that you want you think you know what are they like Tim Topham he obviously works out a whole bunch which is like oh my goodness look at those muscles and- <laughs> <laughs> I better start working out <laughs> <laughs> just pressing one 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 on a yeah. um, <laughs> my fingers are in good shape <laughs> <laughs> on on Monday, we Christopher Goldston. Chris Goldston is the son of Margaret Goldston, and we all love her music. And he's doing a tribute to her, the legacy of Margaret Goldston, which is in conjunction with some of her music that he is publishing. Rafaelita Justice, that's a name you might not know. She was in the army. And when she got out as a veteran, she started, she's a student, she's from New Jersey, she's a student of Vida Zuponsics, but she started her own music school. And as a veteran, there were all these opportunities that were available to her that she didn't know about. And she's thinking, this, I was able to do this. And she pieced it all together and she has a really successful school. But she's got an Armed Forces Veteran Entrepreneurship Boot Camp, which is all about if you are a veteran of the Armed Forces and you want to start something, she's telling you how all these resources that are available. Now, it, this is a, a niche thing because, you know, not so many of us were in the Armed Forces. But because the conference is so big, We can have very specific things that you won't see 
anywhere else. Peter yes. Douglas, he is doing a ballet technique class, but collaborative piano. How do you play for ballet? Because when we graduate from school, we think, you know, I'm going to be the big concert pianist or whatever. No, you're not. You're going to play for ballet and you're going to play for church and you're going to do all these things that you piece together. I mean, I'm sorry, maybe you are the uniquely talented person, but let's face it, most <laughs> of us, we, that, didn't, that didn't happen. But playing for ballet, that's a real playing for dance classes. That's a real thing. Jeff Pettyjohn from Seattle, he's going to talk about improvisation and getting started with triads. And I'm very proud of him because he is a former student of mine. And so oh, this, nice. I know it's one of those things that although I am obviously not old enough to have been teaching people who are adults, yet somehow it seems to <laughs> happen. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I know exactly what you mean. I always wonder how can I be teaching and how can my students now also be teachers? How how did that happen? Yes. Yes. I'm over, we've also got the idea of creating a virtual local MTNA because so many people are geographically isolated or yes. they if you have just tested positive for covid you're not going to want to go to your monthly meeting but how can you get some connection and some education and of course the the lovely thing if there is a lovely thing about covid is that we are all so much more able to do zooms and we are more able to meet not in person. And yes. so, so Vicki fisher Faw, who is from North Carolina, uh, but not the part of North Carolina with airports, she's from the Appalachia where, where it, it there, there's no teacher nearby her, and yet she has a full life because she's got a virtual local MTNA. Grace Wang from Georgia, she's going to do the joy of toy, and that's bringing non... So she's going to do bringing non-traditional instruments so she'll have toy pianos Nicola Canton, whom I don't know if you've met her, she's from Ireland and she's so enthusiastic and she's about 10 years old and she's <laughs> going to supercharge your studio website. Yeah. Catherine Rollin, who is, you know, the famous composer, but she's going to talk about AI because yeah. AI, everybody's thinking, well, you know, will AI impact us? Artificial intelligence, will it impact us? What will we do? How will it? And so she, there are many different proposals about that. She's going to be talking, and it's wonderful actually to meet her and to realize that she is a living human being, but also to hear what she's going to have the most fascinating talk. Again, when we think of things that aren't covered anywhere else, Lorraine Sims yes. is going to talk about gender-neutral voice pedagogy. It's not just for transgender singers anymore. Where are you going to hear that anywhere yes. else? The conference I think one of the one of the most important things that you are sharing right now, Peter, is opportunities to learn things. You know, you mentioned Nicola Canton. She did a podcast with us just recently. Uh, so we've been dear friends as well for many, many years. The little energizer bunny, as we call her. <laughs> and she is just adorable. And I loved the interview that we did with her where she shared sort of her take on having fun. And, you know, you mentioned AI. You know, I use AI all the time. And it's something that I call an idea generator. Because if you are afraid, uh, here's here's where I go back. Many years ago, they were called encyclopedias where you had to look stuff up. And yes. then Miss Google came along and then you would Google it. And then you would read a book and you would look things up. And then you would research maybe on a blog and you would read blogs. And AI for me is an idea generator. And we have to know how to use this technology because that's an opportunity. And again, a big plus in coming to the MTNA conference live is that you can actually learn how you can use these tools in your business, how it can help you be more creative, how it can help you save time, how it can help you make money. There's so many opportunities. This is like gold, Peter, absolute gold. So I am thrilled with who's all going to be presenting there. And I can't wait to renew some friendships of people that I've just met online. And now I'll get to see them in person. And of course, many people who I've never met before, and I'll, I'll get to be introduced to them. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. 
in booth 111, which is like the last Beethoven piano sonata. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, there we are. It's the thing that's lovely about the conference is that two people can go and sort of at the start of the conference say, well, I'll meet you at the end of the conference. Yes. And then at the end of the conference, you you share notes and you discover that you've had fulfilling but completely different experiences because whatever you're going for whatever you're looking for you'll find it there i mean mm-hmm. it's and and everything is all curated and and gathered together the team that selected it is run by vanessa cornet and she is from Minis- she's from St. Paul. She's not from Minneapolis. She's from St. Paul at, at, at the University of St. Thomas. And she's just so, she has such great ideas and such great energies. It was an honor to work with her. Monday is the conference. Gala and Jone Kendrick and Dawn Clement are going to. Jone is, she's a jazz singer, but she's also, I mean, she's a jazz composer. She's an arranger. She is currently nominated for a Grammy because she and Jake, she has a group called Sage, S A J E, which is the initials of the four women who make up that group. And they and Jacob Collier, who is the most talented person on the planet, they collaborated and so. So they're both they're nominated for a Grammy together, and we'll hear her. We we got her. she she lives in Seattle, which is how I knew her, and we asked her before she was nominated. So I'm sure her price went up about a thousand percent. But it's it's so she's on Monday night at the gala, and then things that you won't hear anywhere else on Tuesday. There's the Stecker and Horowitz two piano competition, and so a two piano competition. You don't. I mean. It's the logistics of arranging a two piano competition, yes. much less bringing the people in. That's something. It's it's something again you won't hear anywhere else. Sean Chen is the artist who is the we we always highlight one fabulous artist, and he's he's at UMKC, but he is he was third in the Van Cliburn, and he's the most elegant and wonderful pianist. He's going to give a master class. He's going to give a recital on Tuesday, but he's keeping secret what he's doing, so we don't know what it is yet. Even Brankhart, she's doing Chopin's piano performance practice through his etudes. She's a world authority. She's in Indiana for years and years and years. It's amazing that we get to see her, but we also get to see Kevin Olson doing the elementary piano masterclass because yeah. people say, well, it's just about Chopin etudes. My students are never going to. Your students are going to play Kevin Olson, and you're going to hear him and meet him in the flesh. So yeah. Samantha Coates, she's coming from Australia. She's talking about the transfer students. There's going to be a piano masterclass solely on technique by Teresa Bogart. She does this amazing thing where people, she'll be asking for volunteers. So if you have technical questions, she'll ask and then you just run up on stage and you will play for about 10 seconds and she will say, have you ever noticed that when you do this, you move your shoulder up or whatever? And she's like a laser diagnostician. She's just (laughs) amazing. The way that they have the masterclasses done is that there are huge screens either side of the piano. So you can see the person there, but you can also look at the screens and see the person 30 feet high. And nice. so exa- it's going to be Paul Scheftel, who, who the most charming, elegant gentleman there ever was. He's going to talk about the 48 preludes of the well-tempered Levere. It's just, it's an honor to be with him. He is such a venerable and august presence. Wednesday, is it's going to be how to rank number one on Google, unlocking the power of search engine optimization SEO, Building Your Dream Studio, One Click at a Time by Jonathan Roberts. Tchaikovsky's children's album by Svetlana Belsky. Svetlana Belsky, she lives in Chicago. She is someone I have never met, but she does the most, the most interesting presentations because I've been on panels which have picked her before. She did one on Russian ballet transcriptions, which was called Mysterious Quests and Poisoned Fruit. How can you not want to go to that? Anyway, <laughs> that's it's, what making, it's making me hungry. 
<laughs> not for poison fruit, I hope. No, no. When I knew that we were going to do this, I just went through and and I said, Well, what can I do? What what am I going to be at? And these are these are just you can't miss these. But the most important thing, did I mention that Lori she's got a booth, booth one one one, and she also have a showcase, and that's on Tuesday at eight from eight a.m. to nine a.m. Although if I say that, then you know you're going to take away from one of the other things that we just talked about. How can it be? It's it's funny. People say you don't want to give them too much choice because if they have too much choice, they'll be so unhappy at the things that they didn't go to. And I think, no, we want as much choice. The idea is to make people wish that they were there were two or three or four of us so that we yes. could go to everything that we want to go to. Yeah. You know, Peter, you've just really nailed it. There is so many opportunities to go and see. And this is why it's important to come every year because there's you might have missed one thing, but maybe you want to attend something different the following year, even though there's different presenters. But, you know, make sure you come well rested, wear your running shoes and, <laughs> and bring your notebook. And I just I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm ready to learn. You know, even though we are both educators, we're always going to learn something new. And, you know, now is the time. Make sure that you get registered. Check it out at mtna.org. And don't miss it because it's going to be a game changer. And when you're kind of looking back, and there's a few things, too, that I just had some questions about, you know, mm -hmm. in light of the decreasing emphasis on music education in K-12, to how do you envision the role of the independent music teachers evolving to invite more students into the world of music? How can we do that? You're right. I mean, this is one of the big frustrations of 2023 is that yeah. the emphasis on music education as it's been so decreased because of budget cuts and just because yeah. of shifting priorities. And so we are even more important than we ever have been because there's a glorious world of music out there. And we are now more than ever before, we're the people who invite children and adults and everybody into that. People sometimes make the argument that it's really good for people to study music because it helps your brain and it helps you with the STEM, with the, the things that are viewed as, as more important. And although that's a lovely byproduct, I think that the thing is that music enriches our lives immeasurably. Yeah. And we're so lucky that we have it in our lives and we're so lucky that we get to pass it on. But our role is even more important than it was simply because schools are not doing it the way in education systems are not doing it the way that they used to. I remember my father-in-law years ago, he went to a school in, in Brooklyn and he, he took music appreciation and he was not a musician at all. And he didn't. And his, his family, they were not well. He was an immigrant and he was, and but I remember him singing Barker all from Tales of Hoffman, written by Offenbach. And this was 40 years after he had had the class. And he used to go to the opera, he used to go to music, had been brought into his life by the school and had stayed there for the rest of his life. And I think that it's so important. It's so wonderful. We get to be the people who do the invitation now more than ever before. Yeah, 100%. Well, you know, there's a saying that learning music makes you smarter. But Peter, did you know, and all of our listeners, that teaching music makes you better looking? So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, look in the mirror, but when we, when we're reflecting on the ne neglected, you know, words of music being rediscovered in the last decade, can you share maybe an example of how these rediscoveries are enriching our current music teaching practices? Well, that's, there are some really good things that are happening. One of the really good things that's happening is that we have realized, and you know, people have been saying, I've been doing this for years and years and years, but it seems that in the last decade, it really has taken off that we've realized that there are worlds out there that we never knew. There's all this glorious music that, that people just did not know. And it, it, it's 
so it, it's always been there, but you know, it was published and then it was completely neglected. And I'm thinking especially of music by people like the African American composer Florence Price or the Jamaican composer Oswald Russell. I mean, William Chapman Yahoo, who is our vice president of diversity, equity, and inclusion in MTNA, he has a series of five books published by Oxford of these glorious pieces that were unjustly neglected. There's a, a publishing company called Hildegard, and they do music by women that that were the, if I think about the music education that I got in college, pretty much the only female composer that I was taught about was Germaine Taillefer. And she's the French composer who was part of Les Cis, the six famous French composers. She was the only woman. And so I was taught about her simply because she was, if you like, ennobled by being part of a group that included five men. But that was just a failing in music education that is now being redressed. And it's wonderful and it's about time. MTNA, we have competition. We have a series of competitions. We have a huge series of competitions. And one of the things that Leah Claiborne has done with her Ebony Foundation is that she has instituted a prize in the three piano competitions for the best performance of a piece by an African-American composer. It's a new prize. It's the Ebony Prize. And I am very proud of the fact that one of my students won the senior piano version division of it this last year. He was the first senior piano person to win the Ebony Prize. And it's just, I'm chuffed about that. Wow. Congratulations, Peter. Yeah. That is that is something to uh, to be really proud of. And, you know, when we think about how you have impacted so many lives, you know, through your knowledge, you're you're just like a walking encyclopedia. I'm just like blown away by how you have just brought this wealth of knowledge into MTNA. And we all have people who have impacted and influenced our life. Can you share someone who has been a significant influence in your journey and and any particular memorable story or or funny uh, time uh, that you can uh, share that's kind of left that lasting impression on you and and where you are today. Well, if I think about my previous teacher, my teachers, there are two that really stand out. One is Frank Hinehan. He is in Dublin. He is still alive. And the other is Belushiki, the great Hungarian pianist who died about two years ago. And they both influenced me in completely different ways. Frank Hinehan, he's got two honorary doctorates. He was the head of the College of Music in Dublin, but he had no sense of personal dignity when it came to teaching. And I still remember him teaching and whirling around the room as he's dancing and singing and completely unselfconsciously just communicating the joy of music. And so when I finished, when and I studied with him from when I was 14 until I was 22, which is a long time. So when I finished with him, he was creative, but I was also very, very wild. And then I came to Belushiki, and Belushiki was restrained and good taste and efficiency in of technique at the piano. And I'm not sure that he ever thought that I was a, a true student of his in that I, he did his best <laughs> with, yes. with me. But he's smoothed out all the rough edges that I have. But I remember him saying to me uh, once, Peter, the missing notes, they are like missing teeth, because I guess I had been playing with lots and lots of notes that didn't sound. He said, only <laughs> one is missing and the smile is spoiled. Oh, so, that's funny. Oh, that's funny. Yes, we do want to have a smile with all of our with all of <laughs> our teeth and all of our music notes playing and and oh, what a great story. And I think when we're looking back and considering your your Irish roots and currently life in Seattle, how have these, you know, diverse cultural experiences influenced your approach to music and education? 
Well, I don't know if I remembered to say when I was talking about Nicola Canton that she's from Ireland and she's going yes. to fly over for the conference, especially because, because she is. Ireland is the only country in the world whose national symbol is a musical instrument. Because the national symbol of Ireland, people think it's the shamrock, and it is. But there's another national symbol, which is the harp. And so I grew up in a country where on every coin, on that one side of the coin, there is the harp. And so when you grow up in Ireland, you're surrounded by music. You hear it coming out as you're going down the street. I grew up in Dublin, the, the capital city. The main pedestrian street is called Grafton Street. And every four or five shops outside it, there's somebody playing some instrument or singing or doing so. I mean, you Ireland is an incredibly musical country. And what's lovely also is that there is the feeling that to be truly educated, you should know about music. Mm -hmm. So, yes. and I think that that's a wonderful thing to grow up with. And it's a wonderful thing to share because it, as we, now I'm starting to repeat myself, it does enrich our lives so very, very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, how clever of them to say, let's just put a harp and then maybe we will impact <laughs> the world with our music. And as a seasoned adjudicator, what's maybe one of your most unique or surprising performances that you've witnessed in a competition? I mean, I remember years ago, there was, I was judging a competition and the piano competitions that I judge, when people do them, there's a certain way that you need to be. And yeah. so if they dress up and sometimes they, you know, literally wear ball gowns yes. um, or stunningly beautiful clothes. And every, and then I was judging this competition and a student, she got up and she was not dressed up. She was wearing a sweatpants and jeans and sneakers. And her teacher, you know, she, she it was clearly the time that she had done a competition before. And I thought, oh, she doesn't know how it's done. And she played incredibly beautifully. And it just, it put me in my place because I had thought, you know, she was not going to be good because I had judged her on, on what I saw. But yeah. she was incredibly talented. And so, you know, I gave her first place, even though I'm sure that as I think about it, they've never asked me back. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you're right, Peter, like sometimes we do assume things just yeah. based on maybe how they approach the instrument or, you know, the way that they're dressed or their posture. But I've seen young performers, too, that kind of walk up to the stage, you know, age seven or eight years old that are just shy little kids. But then they're almost transformed when they sit down at the piano and they they become like this other person and just play and and it can be, you know, I remember witnessing that at the uh, APTA conference many, many years ago now. And I just thought, oh, my gosh, I would never have thought that this little person would be able to present this music. But it just goes to show you that there are some surprises out there when we're when we're uh, listening and watching our students performing. And, you know, your journey, of course, as is a performer and a teacher. What's maybe an unexpected place that music has taken you other than Seattle? Well, I'm fortunate in that I got to go to India. There's a woman called Roxana Anklasari, a doctor, and she has a music festival in Pune in India. And I've, I had never been to India, and she brought about five or six of us to India, and including Mary Tickner, whom I don't know if you knew her. She was a wonderful Canadian teacher in Vancouver. But so I've gone to India. I went to Moscow to the, the international, the Tchaikovsky competition. And I when I was there, I was unlucky because it was supposed to be finishing at about 9 p.m., but it delayed. It went on two and a half hours late. And as I was playing, I remember hearing the sound of of the chairs in the auditorium going boom, 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 as people sat up, stood up and left because the subway was closing. 
And, oh. and so they stayed as long as they could, but they had to run to get their subway train so that they could get back to their house. And so all I remember is, is playing and hearing the audience leave very loudly <laughs> all the way. I didn't get past the first round, which is probably... <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And it must have been almost funny because wouldn't you just want to turn around and say, was it something I said? Was it something <laughs> was it something I did? Like, do you guys need a snack? Like, what's going on? Oh my goodness. Well, you know, you've had a lot of fun, you've done a lot of traveling. And if you had to choose one piece of music to play in a completely non-traditional style, what would it be and how would you approach it? It's funny you say that, the one piece in, in non-traditional style. I grew up, I'm, I'm an only child, and so I didn't have kids to play with when I was, and so I used to sit at the piano and I used to noodle and noodle and noodle, and I would, I played what I called my music, and mm -hmm. my music was just improvising because I was, you know, alone and I was bored. Yeah. <laughs> But if there's something that I think is that I always go back to, it's it's folk tunes and folk music. Paul Schefter wrote a lovely series of sight reading books, but with really lovely pieces about folk music. But I think of things like, you know, Shenandoah, it's just the most heartbreak or the water is wide or they're the most heartbreakingly beautiful pieces. They're simple, they're lovely, and you can play those forever. Oh, that sounds like it would be wonderful. And I'll, and I'll put the challenge out there for you to perform that one of these days. <laughs> so a little bit of fun here, Peter. If you could have a musical jam session with any composer from history, who would that be and what would you play together? Well, you sent some questions ahead of time, and this was one of them. And I was thinking, what would I do? And what I would do is, well, first off, I'm not sure that I would want to play with her at all, but there's a composer called Peggy Glanville Hicks. And Peggy Glanville Hicks was an Australian, and she wrote one, really just one piano piece called Prelude for a Pensive Pupil. And it's unbelievably beautiful. It's just heartbreakingly beautiful, but she didn't write any more. It's like, what was she thinking? Why did she just write one piano? Piano's fabulous. Why didn't she write more? And I don't know why she didn't, but I would want to be with her and I would sit her down at the piano and I would say, write more stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Una Boyle is an Irish composer who wrote, she wrote like 400 songs or something like that with piano accompaniment. So she knew how to write for piano, but I feel, and, and of course now I'm being just incredibly selfish by saying this, because as pianists, we have the best repertoire of anyone ever. We yes. have, I, when I was a child, I played piano and French horn. And French horn, you don't, there's no repertoire unless you play in an orchestra with other people, which is lovely, but... Piano, we have so much stuff. It's very greedy of me to say that I want Peggy Danville Hicks to write more for us, but that's what I want. Yeah. Well, it sounds like fun. It sounds like fun. And you're right about the piano repertoire. It's quite incredible. And oh. finally, Peter, what advice would you give to music teachers who are striving to grow their music teaching business and really make a significant impact in their students' lives? That's such a lovely question because it takes us back to the very, very start, doesn't it? So what advice would I give? Come to the MTNA conference in Atlanta in March of 2024, and I look forward to seeing you all there. Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much, Peter, for sharing your insights and your stories with us. Oh. Your experiences and perspectives are truly inspiring for music educators around the world. And how can people learn more about the MTNA conference? You go to mtna.org and there it will be. Awesome. And they can get registered right now. And don't forget to come visit us at booth 111 because we have some free gifts. So you got to show up, come and say hello to Peter and me and all of the Ultimate Music Theory team. And we're so grateful and so looking forward to seeing you, Peter, along with all the other amazing music educators and musicians and speakers and networking opportunities. It's going to be an absolute blast. Again, come visit us at booth 111 to say hello and also to attend our showcase because we do have free gifts for everyone. So thank you, Peter. I can't wait to see you in Atlanta. Are you ready for the MTNA conference 2023? Oh, 2024. What are we saying? It's next year. 
I am so excited. And I'll be there at eight o'clock on Tuesday morning for your showcase. Awesome. I'm going to hold you to it. We're going to do some selfie pictures as well. (laughs) So uh, anyway, thank you again, Peter. Stay tuned for more incredible episodes of the Ultimate Music Teachers Productivity and Profitability Podcast. If you like this episode, be sure to subscribe, comment, share, and join our Ultimate Music Teachers community. And until next time, teach with passion. Bye now. Thanks for listening to the Ultimate Music Teachers Productivity and Profitability Podcast. Together, we can transform lives through the power of music education. I invite you to explore what's possible for your musical journey inside our UMT community. Simply join our Ultimate Music Teachers private Facebook group where we network, answer questions, host live events, and connect on a deeper level. Here's to your ultimate music teaching success with productivity and profitability. Till next time, teach with passion.